at the New England Grassroots Fund, we have the opportunity to see a lot of really exciting local level action around sustainability work um, and to work with groups that are um, creating really um, new solutions to our environmental and economic and social challenges. So I'm just going to share with you a few of the exciting examples that we're seeing. Um, energy independence is obviously crucial to resilience work. We're seeing renewable energy projects, but also community-owned energy projects, such as this um, model with co-op power in Massachusetts. And we're also seeing neighbors helping neighbors install their renewable energy systems. So following the New England barn raising model and hosting these energy raiser events where folks get together, help each other install their systems, reducing that um, installation cost, while also empowering each other with the knowledge about how their systems work. And although renewable energy is uh, much more marketable, the real incredible savings are coming from energy efficiency work. This is the elementary school in Plainfield, New Hampshire, that went under a deep energy retrofit and saw really huge savings as a result. We're also seeing groups um, develop local food supplies to become more resilient. The Islands Commons group in Aquidneck, Rhode Island, realized that their community would be incredibly vulnerable um, in the event of natural disaster. So they're creating a comprehensive food plan um, to make their island more food secure. We're also seeing food forests popping up in urban areas, such as this one in Boston. Um, so creating green spaces in cities while also increasing access to local food. And in Burlington, um, Spoonful Herbals is improving access to medicine in their community. Um, this is an herb mob that is increasing awareness and use of local herbal medicine. And uh, while doing so, also decreasing drug miles and the environmental impact of pharmaceuticals. In Portland, Maine, we're also seeing groups hosting perma permaculture gatherings where folks get together uh, to share skills related to permaculture while getting their hands dirty and actually implementing some of these techniques on a community member's site. And during financial hard times, we're also seeing groups create new economic systems, uh, such as this time bank in Brattleboro, Vermont, where, um, which helps uh, people make ends meet by exchanging hours instead of dollars. And this farmer was able to obtain a tractor to increase production on his farm through a community revolving loan fund that um, was sparked out of a conversation in the community about peak oil and how their town could become more resilient. And we're also seeing um, another exciting model like this happening in Vermont in South Royalton um, with a group called Building a Local Economy that's starting a local investment club to keep, um, keep investments in local projects. This is their exciting vision for a more sustainable future. In Connecticut, uh, we have groups that are hosting repair cafes where anyone can bring in any number of damaged and broken items to be repaired and also to learn skills about how to repair their items. So this keeps things out of our landfills while also helping people build new skills. And this project, I'm sure some of you in the room know better than me, <laughs> um, but this is a really exciting project happening in Bethel. Um, and after Bethel was hit pretty hard by Irene, um, they realized that a lack of social cohesion in the town um, kind of hindered their recovery. And they really bounced back and created a pop-up university to help rebuild community. So anyone in the community can teach a course, and anyone can come and learn for free. I think there were courses such as sourdough bread making, um, vehicle maintenance, and even square dancing. And then other groups are finding resources in the least likely places. The Richard Institute um, in Brattleboro is changing perceptions around human waste, collecting it, recycling it, and um, using it as a sanitized fertilizer on local farms. 
And groups are also um, raising awareness about important environmental issues in their communities. This is the Boston Climate Action Network. And they are identifying and marking gas leaks in Boston and putting pressure on local government and utilities to get those gas leaks fixed. <coughs> and in Providence, Rhode Island, we have um, a group called Garden Time that is um, implementing agricultural training programs at correctional facilities um, to help uh, give uh, prisoners skills and help them um, connect them with opportunities for re-entry into society. This group, The Move, in Roxbury, Massachusetts, is um, including youth in their agricultural work and um, providing opportunities, particularly for low-income and urban youth. Um, and I just wanted to highlight the importance of bringing youth into the resiliency discussion and all of the work that we're doing and engaging them. And also the importance of um, reaching out to people in new ways and really tapping into that human creativity that can help us um, be inspired to build a brighter future. This is Tim Blessed. Um, he's an inspiring environmental hip-hop artist from New Bedford, Mass. And he engages folks in um, environmental justice issues through spoken word and music. And then I also wanted to highlight the importance of music and art to bring folks together and also to give us a way to celebrate because uh, the transition to a more resilient future really doesn't have to be difficult and barren, but rather uh, really rich and beautiful. And so that was just a glimpse of some of the exciting work that we're seeing on the ground. Uh, but there are many, many more, as you can see on our map. And um, it's really exciting when you see all of them together to see a really powerful grassroots movement emerging in New England. So, thank you. Woo!